personal leadership sounds a bit self-helpy. What what is it to you? Subscribe to my YouTube link <laughs> and I'll tell you more. There's three levels to it. The very centre of it is all around personal leadership and that is get your shit together. I think we spend a lot of time worrying about areas that are outside of our control. If we think we're able to control our attitude rather than worrying and thinking, oh, it's all outside of my control, we can start to own some of those things. Is there a moment in your life where you realised you could lead yourself? Early on in my working life, I did a programme called Teach First. Stepping into that classroom with very limited teaching experience, not even a teaching qualification yet. Stepping into there, it's like I had to own this environment and I had to lead myself. Hello, I'm Chris Sisman and welcome to Sparks, a series by Interactive Workshops. In every episode, we spark something in work and life, from how to spark teams, to how to spark performance, to how to spark, yet again, I'm here, not with Jonna, but with Emily Link. Welcome back to the show. It's a pleasure to be welcomed back. I have to say, it's been a little bit of time, so potentially I wasn't great the first time around. Is that the <laughs> no, feedback for me? You wouldn't be here if you weren't great okay, the first that's time. Good. In fact, topic we talked about, I think we talked about early careers, inspired further episodes I, with yes, more guests. Airbus, yeah, Airbus, talking specifically about their grad program. <gasps> you inspired something, you trend set it. Good. And I have to say, you've had a blockbuster list of people coming on the podcast. So well, I understand entirely. Now, They've been great. You. So there we go. Good. You Pleased to be back. You a long line of people uh, <laughs> that have come onto the podcast. Uh, thrilled to have you back. We're going to talk about something I know you spend quite a lot of time talking about and running workshops on which is personal leadership. I think you're an example of personal leadership, someone who takes responsibility for their own actions, their own behaviors, their own personality, what you bring to work. But what is it? What is this personal leadership topic you spend so long talking about? That's a little tear in my eye. That's <laughs> probably the, the nicest thing I've heard all week. Thank oh. you, Christoph. Um, yeah, personal leadership. We do talk about it a lot. I think it's a topic that lots of people are interested in. So it does form a key part of potentially our early careers pathways, but it does pop up on management and leadership pathways as well. Because I think everyone wants to be a better version of themselves, like whether that's being better at their job and performing in that respect, but also thinking about areas outside of work too. And I do believe that those things fit together. That if things are usually going well outside of work, work is better. And on the contrary, when things aren't going so well outside of work, work is worse and vice versa. Yeah, so yes, together. they yeah. do we indeed. We like to spark things in work and life. We, we think they're connected. We think there's things that we can apply from what we learn in work to life and vice versa. Um, but personal leadership, is this... It can't, sounds a bit self-helpy. It sounds a bit <laughs> buzzwordy. What What is it to you? Subscribe to my YouTube link <laughs> and I'll tell you more. No, um, I think we're all familiar with the term. And I think there's, if you're an L&D professional, you work in the people space. Like James Schooler's model speaks directly to this. There's three levels to it. And the very center of it is all around personal leadership. And that is, based, can I swear on the podcast? Go for it. Get your shit together. Right. That is at the core of this model. If you can't do that, it's very difficult then to start managing or leading others. If you can't look after yourself, but also perform in your role, then managing a team, leading a team, contributing to other parts of organizations or family, etc., it just becomes a hell of a lot more difficult if you can't get that thing right at the core. So, so we might aspire to lead a team, lead a company, help lead the business. But if we can't get what's in that core, which is personal leadership right, we're just kind of doomed to failure. Harsh way of putting it, but maybe <laughs> yes. True. Yes, I do think so. And that's probably about performing in your role. But if you perform in your role, it's probably because you're sleeping well, eating well, exercising, got good relationships outside of work, people to lean on. It means that you can perform at work. Like genuinely, I think those things go hand in hand. So when you're able to do that high performance is because there's other areas of your life that are also high performing, but it does take effort and focus and it won't always be at those high levels. There will be moments of drop off. That doesn't mean you failed just yet or doomed to failure, but maybe there's some areas you need to focus on to get the best from yourself. So it's not about being a perfect leader, but it's about taking ownership and responsibility of these areas from what we eat to how we sleep to how we do our job. Yeah. S taking those things seriously, working on them. Definitely. And I think all of those big ones you've just mentioned are kind of the foundations, the fundamentals to get right. I mean, there are experts in all of those fields and 
there are lots of people I know that will tune into this podcast that probably tune into other podcasts that like focus specifically on those areas like sleep experts thinking about the high performance podcast like people have a genuine interest in like okay what can I do to be a better version and might zoom in on those specifics to try and enhance them at various levels so is it about focusing on what we can control versus what we can't, what, what we can do something about ourselves? I, th- I, think, I think we spend a lot of time worrying about areas that are outside of our control. Like the reason this comes up on some of our programs at early entry, like careers, whether it's grad schemes or you're in the first few years of your great job, is because if you think that everything is externally happening to you. I'm not getting the promotion or I'm not getting recognized or I'm not getting the feedback because it's my boss that's not stepping into those conversations or they don't like me or I'm not progressing because I haven't been on the L&D program. No one's put me forward. If we think it's all external and we have no responsibility for it, then I think it's going to probably be an area that we're not going to be successful in in the long term. But if we think to Stephen Covey's three kind of areas we can control and areas we can influence if we focus there so some things you mentioned kind of coming to work each day and we're able to control our attitude like we work with some brilliant people Emma Wiggs being one of them Paralympic world champion gold medalist she talks very explicitly about I can control my attitude when there's someone cutting me up on the road I can decide how to react to that but equally, when I've had a training session that hasn't gone well, she's a para canoeist. She can control how she deals with that and what she does next. If we put our energy and our attention into what we can control, I believe then we have more power to influence. So talk to your boss, ask for the feedback, say, why am I not being recognized? Why am I not going on the L&D program? Rather than worrying and thinking, oh, it's all outside of my control and it's just subjective, it's opinion based we can start to own some of those things. Okay, so it's about ownership. It's about saying, I can control that. I can control my attitude. I can control what I put into my job. Mm -hmm. Inputs rather than outputs, maybe. And is it then just a case of focusing hard, trying really hard? (laughs) Is it just trying really hard to do the things that we know we can do that are in our control? Or is it more than that? Yes, I do believe so. But there's probably some lessons to learn here from sport in the way that we maybe we approach this. I I love sport, particularly football. As a footballer. As a footballer, I love it. Um, But this area, I think, is interesting in the sporting context where maybe people spend 90% of their time training and then just 10, maybe less, 5% performing at the World Championships, the Olympics. On the pitch or... Yeah, if it's me, just a a Sunday afternoon on (laughs) probably a pretty terrible pitch somewhere (laughs) in London. Um, If only open to job offers from any football clubs out there by the way (laughs) Arsenal hit me up um but they spend so much of their time training to try and get better at something in the working world we probably spend 90% of our time performing maybe 95% and very limited time training or trying to get better at something and this is almost the argument we have lots of lots of time with L&D with HR teams they are ambassadors of this but they have to get the buy-in from their organisation. Say, release the population, let them come and learn a bit more about this topic so they become better at doing it in practice. But of course, businesses, organisations, they need results. So 95% of the time, it's the expectation to perform very highly at what you're doing. And then 5%, it's like, okay, yeah, you can go on a one-day programme or or half a day or 90 minutes only is all we're allowing you out of the office, which is tough because you need to just try and improve through osmosis or learning on the job, which means you're going to fail and there's going to be moments you think, I'm not very good at this. But it's trying to find a bit more of that time in your day-to-day, in your week, over your year, getting the buy-in to say, I want to go and improve that skill. I want to learn more about it. It doesn't have to be. L&D programs caveat that we can help you with those um but it can be like trying to sit alongside other people that have maybe different skill sets to you or getting a mentor or a coach trying to bring a bit more of that training that skill development into the working life so that we get better at things rather than just keep doing them and making some incremental improvement let's look for those bigger improvement shifts yeah that's why sorry we talk a lot about uh, footballers who are on the training pitch long after the session's over practicing the free kicks or whatever it is they're trying to improve at. Um, and a lot of footballers say that's how they got 
to the top. That's how they became an England star. Yeah. And and we go, oh yeah, that's that's great, isn't it? But we don't apply that maybe to our own work. What's our equivalent to work at beyond what anyone else will stick around and work at? Exactly. And like, I mean, it'd be scary probably to ask David Beckham how many times he's kicked a ball with his right foot, but 10,000 hours more, Definitely the times more, you do yeah. it, they embed that skill set. And he's got a very specific thing that he's going to say, I'm going to get better at this. And then he became the free kick specialist for England. It's what is your thing that you're going to try and maybe we try and do too many things sometimes. What are you going to hone in on and really develop in? What's been kind of going to become your free kick specialism? Yeah. yeah. And narrowing down, that's really helpful, isn't it? Because we we try and get skills across different areas. You try and be broad and, and cover a lot of bases, but actually we could narrow that down a little bit to give ourselves mm -hmm. something that's manageable and say, Do you know, over the next year, I'm going to improve in that. That's going to be my key yeah. focus area for my personal leadership. I'm going to work on that. Exactly. It keeps it simple. You're such a driven person. You know how to set a goal and get it, not just in football, not just on the pitch, but in work and life as well. Is there a moment in your life where you realized you could lead yourself? You could own those things that are controllable for you? Hmm, good question. Um, probably early on in my working life, I did a program called Teach First, which some people might know, which is essentially a sink or swim graduate scheme, throwing people into quite challenging teaching contexts. And I think if you don't realize that you are the only person in that room, and you're going to have to kind of fake it till you make it, then basically your life is going to be a misery for two years. So very quickly, I realized stepping into that classroom with very limited teaching experience and not even a teaching qualification yet, judge what you will. Um, but stepping into there, it's like I had to own this environment and I had to lead myself. And yeah, probably lied to children along the way, not just once, but very much so at the beginning when asked directly, have you had a teaching job before? Yeah, of, of course I have. Just a school down in Bristol. Which one? You won't know it. Don't worry about it. Let's move <laughs> on. Date is, title, let's go. Yeah. And I think I realised it's, it's quite an isolating job teaching. There's, it's less team orientated. You're in that classroom with 30, in my case, teenagers who are a pretty unforgiving audience. Mm. Definitely the first six months borderline bullying weirdly you can't report that to your kind of bullying ambassador at the school because you're a teacher you're employed member of staff um but yeah over time you realize you have the capabilities you develop the skill set and then you step into it a bit of a wholeheartedly but at the beginning I had to really think I've got to lead this I've got to own this this is me in this room feeling suddenly quite grown up yeah and loads of things you could blame for that as well you could blame the kids because they're being terrors you could blame which was 100% accurate you could blame Chris. their hormones or whatever you could blame the teacher that's put you in that classroom you could blame the the organization teach first the way it's structured because you yep. didn't have the experience you could blame your parents you know setting you up for that opportunity or whatever it is you could blame all sorts of different things but none of those things are in your control exactly you've hit the nail on the head. Like, but it's what, what can I control? It's okay, how I show up each day, knowing that one of the key things about those schools is kids are used to like high frequency turnover. So it's almost like you won't be here past Christmas. So why, why trust that you will be? And it's like, okay, well, one thing I can control is I will show up each day and do my best. And then I can also, going back to other areas of my life, I pretty much had no social life, um, but I prioritize sleep and like, being with my family who I knew would be incredibly supportive at the end of the day might even give me a hug you know after a day of kind of emotional eroding sounds like you might need one after needed those, a hug those kind of days. needed yeah. a hug needed someone that might sit yeah. down and be like here's your dinner so I don't have to think about that whilst I'm marking the books or planning tomorrow's lesson so trying to get some of those essential building blocks in like the fundamentals that were needed so that the, the more difficult aspect of life at that time was maybe not as challenging even though it was still challenging yeah, so finding those things that were going to help you in what exactly. you're doing for, for yourself. They were controllable. You could, or maybe even within your influence. You exactly. Could, it's not going to take a lot of influencing skills to get your mum to put a <laughs> put meal on the table, I'm imagining. <laughs> well, I hope not, no. She's but still think, pretty good at that nowadays. That's, that's a good thing. I think you've uh, taken that approach to what you do now. You, you bring a, a certain self and a certain energy to work. 
how do you do that time and time again? I'm imagining in, t- <laughs> in teaching to do that day after day was difficult. And in your role now, you'll have some days better than others, highs and lows, some mm-hmm. difficult challenges to face. How do you do that again and again? Because I think you do that really well. I think nine times out of 10, I don't, because I know you incredibly well. You've seen me at my worst and probably at my best. Um, but nine times out of 10, I think it is a proactive choice to say, okay, it is an area I can control, like how I come to work. We have the pleasure of working with a brilliant team, like with great people that I've got some great relationships with. So actually, just naturally, I get a lot of my fulfillment from them. But coming to work and building those relationships and choosing how I interact with those people internally and externally, because I think life is more enjoyable if you try and make it more enjoyable so that you come to work with that smile. You try and be the meeting in your client's calendar that is a little bit different. That's not like the update and the okay, here's the logistics, but it's friendly. And yes, okay, we'll cross off the update and the logistics, but let's also be relational in those moments too. So I think proactively choosing to be like that maybe it comes to me quite naturally because I'm quite sociable maybe too sociable I have to lock myself in a dark room to get some focused work done um but genuinely choosing to say okay I'm gonna show up with a smile on my face I'm gonna own that part of the day Mm. because that feels like it will have a more positive impact on myself and the people around me yeah and you're leaning into something that is very naturally you. It's not exactly. trying to be someone else. It's leaning into who you are. You like to be relational. You like to be social. You like to be that conversation that was more relational, more friendly and more mm-hmm. fun than any other in the day. And you're leaning into that and saying, well, I'm going to bring that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to proactively bring that. It means I probably struggle with some other areas, but I literally try and focus on what I'm good at. And I'm glad you think it's quite authentic. There's always so. a risk. I so. <laughs> I'm interested as well how uh, resilience plays a part in personal leadership. Yeah. It's a bit of a buzzword. It's it? a huge love we that talk, you've dropped a buzzword in. A lot, yeah. But is that is that part of it? Yes, I think so. Um, they say like to build resilience, that classic buzzword, you have to go through quite a traumatic event to see how you bounce back. I don't wish to bring that on anybody really no, you don't like, really want to role play that even no no, no exactly like, okay we want to have a resilience workshop in our leadership program okay what are we going to subject people to like SAS who dares wins and see if they come out the other side yeah. a bit stronger you can mess with them can you lights could all go out at the start of the workshop or you could book a deliberately terrible room yeah that exactly be that'd be fun just throw them off completely yeah. um, on the wrong day or date yeah see if they can cope with that get them to design the leadership program as we're there yeah let's go yeah, yeah. Just be like, what shall we do? Good, We've got two days together. Let's go for it. But no, um, people people do want to build resilience. And I, an element of it is living through experiences and knowing that you can cope is probably the foundational way to build that. Um, but and, and I know I'm circling back on insights I've shared already or thoughts. They're not necessarily insights, wisdom. Um, but like literally for re- resilience is, I think, you can be more resilient if you have slept, if you have those relationships if you feel like you've got elements outside inside work that keep you a bit more balanced that you exercise and you get a bit of a release from that I think we are human beings and we have some fundamental needs addressing those means that when a challenge pops up a curveball is thrown our way then we are better able to deal with it because we are fully nourished and rested etc otherwise those things we wobble and we crumble that's okay. Someone will pick you up, mm. but it's kind of, you need those people to pick you up and know that you've got that support network and those fundamentals to fall back on. And that resilience booster of whatever it is, sleep or the, the fun things of life. Yes. Those are within our control as well. As we talked about, they're things that we can go and pursue and we probably know what, what kind of amount of sleep we need or what time we need to wake up or um, the kind of things that will give us energy mm-hmm. in life. And so we can go after those. There's nothing stopping us in that that kind of area. Exactly. And you might not know exactly, but definitely worth trying to explore what it is that you need to make you feel at your best. And I'm not sitting here thinking, saying I get this right all the time. Like, do not for a moment Mm. think that that's right. Like, you know, I know that I should probably get some sunlight every day and go outside for a walk. But there are days when I probably don't really leave my desk or... I'm in a cave because a client has put us in a cl- cave for like the Quite two days. Yeah, Quite literally. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Resilience building workshops. <laughs> um, but genuinely trying to, trying to bring those days in really con- or those 
activities in or those relationships that we know nourish us intentionally trying to do that more and more we know we know those things I mean, I'm not sitting here saying mm. that you don't know them everyone knows what we should be doing more of it's mm. just trying to schedule them and make them happen which yeah. is easier said than done it's interesting, isn't it? We could have talked about all sorts of different skills you might need to help your personal leadership. But really what we're coming back to is the, the simple things of sleep and diet and just making sure you bring a bring your best self to yeah. work. Um, what role does rest play in your resilience and in your personal leadership? It will be no secret that I love a good holiday. <laughs> I think we have many people have very intense jobs trying to find those opportunities to take a break. Um, there was a scary stat, so I put it on my LinkedIn last week, that British Airways said... It's <laughs> <laughs> British Airways now. It's your, your flight, your next flight confirmed. That is my next flight confirmed. <laughs> Excellent, just boarding pass coming through. Um, they said that up to 50% of Brits don't take their holiday allowance. Um, which, of course, people have their reasons, but rest and recovery is important. So if we can find those opportunities, it doesn't have to be the big break. But if you've got an intense working pattern, when is the couple of days or the weekend even? You don't have to jam pack your social calendar that you're going to have a little bit of downtime. I mean, again, athletes talk about this all the time. They do the big cycle. They do the big performance. And then it's like rest, recovery. Yeah, recovery day or before I go again. Long it is. Yeah. Can you see me now sitting on my sofa with my uh, my legs in those uh, fantastic yeah, little yeah. leg compressions? Kind of breathing chamber, exactly, recovery, yeah. swim. Yeah, these I'm are glad you're we, getting this image. We, we talk about these things in the, the realm of sport and performance, yeah. but not so much in, in business. And um, of course, we have weekends. Of course, we have holidays. But it's not talked about in the same way. that You, could, you should have a recovery day or you should... <laughs> Yeah. Be topping yourself back up to perform at the highest level. Yeah. And it, like, I very much know it's not always possible, like calendars and diaries and expectations. Um, but it's it's trying to build those things in. Like, we're going to be working for a hell of a hell of a long time, scarily. I think I saw a meme the other day of Rishi Sunak meeting some like nursery school kids kind of being like little caption over the top saying, you're never going to retire. Literally, that's a dream for you and your generation. I was like, wow, harsh. Kind of dark. Yeah, yeah <laughs> dark. But I mean, we will work for a, for a very long time. It's, yeah, the retirement age is going up. It's yeah. yeah, I don't look at mine anymore. I don't need to know that. <laughs> so it's trying to make life sustainable and enjoyable. And, um, you know, it'll be no secret. I hope, I hope you can see my tan here. Like, but trying to... Glowing. Go, glowing, glowing. Glowing. Um, but trying to get those periods in where you go away or you get the time off and book those in. Just use your holiday. Like, it's what it's there for. Like those days are yours. Enjoy them. Mm. It's what life's about. Otherwise it will pass you by. Yeah. And be, be intentional with them as well. Mm. Intentionally, like, What is it that's going to make you come alive? That's going to top you up? Where do you want to go in the world? Yeah, exactly. What do you want to do? Exactly. What's going to bring you energy? Yeah. You've got to have those goals outside of work too. So that you can, you know, is it traveling that you want to do? Is it a book you want to write? Yeah. The list can go on. The list yeah. can go on. Yeah. There's all sorts of stuff we could do. Before we go, Em, tell me a little bit more about how we're helping leaders, not just in the personal leadership, but in all aspects of leadership. At Interactive Workshops, we get the pleasure and the privilege of working with many organisations and many individuals on this topic. So whether that's something very specific, like coaching, particularly to this personal leadership area, is like, okay, I need some tailored support for me and my goals, and I would love to share and get some stimulus some questions posed to me about how I might develop but also of course we specialize in bespoke design and delivery so thinking about pathways thinking about strategy days thinking about multifaceted programs that people can really develop skills in particular areas they can develop their leadership they can meet with colleagues that are managers leaders and build those networks and relationships to find out how someone else might be doing it too fantastic thank you em for joining me once again on the sparks podcast it's been a pleasure it's been great i've loved it thank you for having me back thank you christoph